and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. How are you? It is July now, beginning of July, and uh, the sun has come. We're lucky it hasn't been too terribly hot, but it's definitely a sunny day today and I'm wearing my June top. This is a little tank top I knit out of some Kelborn Woolens Mojave. It's a pattern by Petite Knits and um, it's great like all of her patterns i have no complaints um the one thing about this tank top is i knit it here let me show you see um i knit it with a lot of positive ease like i have a lot of room in this tank top as you can maybe see and i think i would prefer it with less ease in fact maybe negative ease might be better but you know what it's a loose and airy tank top for uh, a warm summer day here and I'm happy to share it with you. I have finished a lot of things, oh, so many things, and um, I'd like to share them all with you um, in good time. Let's start with some July socks. There's a band called July Talks, and I just had a, a moment where I was like, July socks, July talks. Anyway, um, this was a sock tube that I cranked who knows when, and it is using some nomadic fibers. Can you hear my washing machine singing to me? Um, it's knit in some nomadic fibers. I believe this is called High Tide. And it's just a, I believe this is a 76 stitch sock tube. I used some Sheepies Metropolis for the cuffs and the toes. And I did um, some stripey heels. I used the yarn itself. And so again, I call these bullseye heels. It's just a, it's not, it's not a technical thing. It's just when you use self-striping yarn and you knit an afterthought heel, it creates this like bullseye effect because this there's usually one color on the heel and then they make concentric circles on the way out. So this is a pair of large socks. They're gonna go on the um, probably Christmas pile. I have, my pile is growing and growing. This whole knitting a sock tube um, into a pair of socks every month is really, bolstering up my knitted sock gift basket. Do you have one of those? Do you have a place where you tuck away things that you've finished so that you can give them away at some point? I do. And it sits right up there on top of my bookshelf. So it's a little tricky for me to get to because I have short arms. Um, but I keep uh, anything that I knit that I don't have an intention for at this time. So, or, or if I was planning on giving it away, I just tuck it in that box. And then when it's time for holidays, birthdays, I can grab um, something out of my box. I do have some um, dishcloths in there. I have, I think a hat or two, and I have some socks and I have some, um, some of those hot pads that you make on a loom. Do you, ever, do you ever do those? Um, I never had one of those as a kid. And so as an adult, I'm super excited about making hot pads. <laughs> I know it's a weird thing. Anyway, those are my July socks. Uh, and I use nomadic fibers in there. I wanna say trusty sock base. I'll clarify that if I am wrong. So I finished those. That was a quick, um, a quick project. I'm really finding that turning um, if you have access to sock tubes or a uh, circular sock machine, um, they really like t taking a, a tube that I cranked in this case months and months ago uh, and turning them into a pair of socks really only takes a couple days. It's really um, a quick project, which is so nice because socks, if you're not cranking them on a sock tube or on a sock machine, take they're like a considerable time investment. I don't think people realize how many tiny, tiny little stitches go into a pair of socks, but it's a lot and knitters know that. So cranking out a tube really does speed up the process. Those rough needles. Um, I can't decide if I should do this one first or last because I have a lot to say about it. Let's do it now. I finished my crochet granny square sweater. And you know what? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's hard to um, photograph because I used a very dark color for the outline. Um, I finished it and I was happy with it. And I thought, okay, it, you know, it's very sweater shaped. 
uh, it looked appropriate. I blocked it. Like I gave it a really good soak and I laid it out for days and days. And I'm, I was really happy with how it turned out. And then this morning, before we met, before you came over, I, uh, I took some pictures of myself in this sweater and can I just, I'm gonna toot my own horn. I'm gonna be a horn tutor and let you know that I think that this sweater turned out amazing. I am so delighted with how it fits me. I'm gonna pop some pictures in here because I think you need to know how fabulous it fits me too. Um, and really, I don't know if it was, I think it was a combination of many, many things that made this sweater the delight that it is. Um, it is me finding out that I enjoy crocheting granny squares. I didn't know that. Uh, and learning how to do it uh, with all of the little hit, hints and tricks that comes with that. Um, like, I didn't know how to change the colors. I didn't know how to work in my ends. I didn't know how to join the squares together to make a cohesive fabric. But those are all things that I learned through the help of YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. And then, so after learning all those things, I got to apply things that I already knew. So I knew how to pick up uh, knitted stitches on a fabric. So I got to apply that knowledge in a new way. So I learned that I had to crochet around first to give myself a really nice edging along the crochet. And then I could pick up the top of those crochet stitches and knit away. So I learned that. I learned that um, you have to pick up stitches at a different rate depending on um, the type of fabric that you're creating. So when I created this ribbing along the neckline and along the bottom, I could pick up more stitches, um, let's say per inch, because I was creating a ribbed fabric, which has fewer stitches per inch. When I was picking up for the sleeves, which is in stockinette and, and on a slightly larger needle, I learned that I needed to pick up fewer stitches because I had fewer stitches per inch. So I learned so many things. And then I got to apply some knitting knowledge that I already had, like using short rows to create the cap of this sleeve and then decreasing down to a sleeve cuff size that I like, to a sleeve length that I like, and then knitting the cuff. I'm just delighted. And I think we're not always, I don't think creators are always, um, willing to see the joy and the delight in a finished object. Sometimes we're a little too critical of the things that we've made. Like we look at a creation or something we made and, and you can say, oh, well, I had one fewer stitch on that sleeve than the other sleeve. And I remember I had to do a funny decrease to, to catch up. No one knows and no one cares. No one cares if you did that and no one will know except for you. And if you can let that go and find the joy in what you created, I think, I think so many of us will be happier with the things we made. I can't tell you how delighted I am with this. I'm sure there are tons of mistakes. There are probably a lot of mistakes in the crochet because that is something that I'm very new at. I don't think I was especially um, perfect in the way that I joined the squares, but I was having fun and I just kept at it. And then the sleeves, again, that was, that to me was the biggest hurdle from a knitting perspective because I wasn't entirely sure how to do it but I just forged ahead and I did it so I made this fabulous sweater that nobody else has just by being curious and a little brave so I'm really happy with this sweater again I have some pictures here to share with you and uh, I hope you don't mind me telling you how absolutely delighted I am with this project I am absolutely going to be providing a video in, I'm hoping the next couple weeks. And it'll just sort of, what I did was I just took little videos as I was going and making decisions along the way um, to, to walk you through the process of me making this sweater. I don't have a pattern for it because um, number one, I have no idea how to write a crochet pattern, like none. I don't even know how to read a crochet pattern. <laughs> Um, but I, I hope that the video will give you, um, 
an insight into what I was thinking as I made each decision. I'm sorry, I have like dog hair on me and it's really bothering me. Um, I hope that it will help you see the, the my thought process and my decision making through, through the process. And um, I hope that it gives you the courage to try something and to find joy in something new. Anyway, I'm going to have a video. I can't tell you how delighted I am with this thing. Um, it's just fabulous. And I think I look great in it. So I said it and I meant it. And I hope that you share some of the projects that you feel great in too. So this is my great big crochet granny square project. <laughs> it's done and I'm so happy with it. I will be wearing this to probably whatever yarny event I go to this fall. You will likely see me traipsing around in this crazy thing. And if you do, please come and say hi and um, tell me what you're working on that you're loving. This crazy thing is going to be worn everywhere. I can't even tell you. I'm so proud of it. Um, and that's the big monkey off my back, I guess. I have been working on some other things though that I'd like to share with you. And they were sort of, I guess, somewhat of a palette cleanser of sorts. Um, uh, you rem may remember that not too long ago, I was making up a ton of hats for Craft Free Yay, which is a local charity organization. Um, now that it's summer holidays, my daughters um, have a bit more time on their hands and they were looking to, to make some things. So um, we had a look at Craft Free Yay and some of the things that they were looking for, for uh, in terms of donations. So my daughters have been busy making um, some snuffle mats for dogs in shelters. My oldest daughter um, wanted to knit something. She wanted to knit actually stuffies. So we found a pattern for a, a stuffed bunny that you can make out of a square of knitting and then you just seam it up and it makes a bunny. It's adorable. Um, she's made four of them. <laughs> and now, what's the latest craze? I think we're working on some hot pads from the loom and um, We'll see what we create from there. But yeah, I'm, I'm number one, I'm delighted that my daughters um, are making things with their hands because I think it's, uh, I, I, th I mean, I think that we all know that there's a sense of accomplishment when you make something with your hands and you can have something to show for it, that you can say, look, I made this. And um, I know for certain that the, uh, the shelters are very appreciative of these snuffle mats, especially for the pets, because the lady who's in charge of um, craft for Yeg. Her name's Diane. Hi, Diane. Um, stopped by one day with a bunch of supplies to make these snuffle mats and she had just come from the shelter uh, and let us know that the, the dogs just enjoy them so much and she said they're so enriching. So she thinks that they're a very worthwhile craft to make and so my daughters were then, they're sort of more inspired or more delighted to be making these things. Uh, and the stuffies I think are, are a really nice thing. I know they have a collection for emergency departments. Um, so they will collect little stuffies or things that are comforting for small children if they have to be in a very stressful environment. So I think that's where the bunnies are going to go. And uh, winter is always coming, to quote Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, and so last time I made a whole bunch of hats and this time I thought, well, mittens are a must living where we live. In Edmonton, it gets cold, but it's also snowy and children's hands in snow um, can really suffer from the cold. So I wanted to make some mittens. And I had remembered that I used years ago a pattern from a book called Weekend Knitting. I'll try and pop a picture in here somewhere. Um, and it was a great book. I, I really enjoyed it at the time. I really enjoyed leafing through it and I've made several little projects from it. But I've made these mitts, I don't know how many times. They are just a fabulous, um, fabulous simple knit pattern. In the past, I have used um, Woolies Thick and Quick, which is a chunky weight yarn. Um, this time I wanted to use uh, some acrylic because I wanted these mittens to be very easy care. So I don't know who's getting them. I want them to be able to go through a washer and a dryer without too much fuss. So I went to my local yarn shop called um, The Fiber Nook. Hi, Fiber Nook. And I picked up some Cascade Anthem. 
holy cow, this yarn comes in an array of colors, including uh, fabulous neon. And um, so I picked up two skeins of this color. And um, I think we can agree that it's pretty fabulous. I won't lie, I was probably quite inspired by the fact that the Barbie movie's coming out soon. <laughs> and I made these, they're, they're child size mittens, they're a little bit small on me. And as my older daughter said, they're pretty chonky. Like it's, it's two strands of a worsted weight held together. So they are quite a dense fabric. And I think that makes them great for winter here. And um, the, the mittens that I've, I have had knit in this pattern before kept my hands really dry, even in like playing in snow and stuff. And they dried really quickly. So this is one pair of super mittens I made. Um, there's a, I will put a link for this pattern in the show notes below, as well as the book if you're interested. So I made one and two pairs of the super mittens with strings. If you don't live someplace cold, um, you may not know that we put strings on mittens, usually for kids, but sometimes adults do them too. So you don't lose your mitts. So what happens is you take these mittens and you string them through the sleeves of a jacket. And so this will often sit behind you like this as you have your jacket on. And then if you take your mittens off, they just dangle from your sleeves and you don't lose them. Um, if the string is too long, you can tie a knot like this just to shorten it up so that they're not dangling too much. Um, and if it's really annoying, you, you can just cut it off. I won't be offended, but um, I've made two pairs of the um, super mittens. And then I did have a little bit of that yarn left. Each of these um, pairs of mittens weighed about 75 grams, um, <clears throat> which I thought wasn't bad. I had 200 grams of the yarn to start with because I had two 100 gram balls. So I had used 75 grams to make these two and I didn't want the last little bit to go to waste. So I turned to another trusted uh, pattern and that is the World's Simplest Mittens. This is a mitten pattern by um, Tin Can Knits with the usual fabulousness that is Tin Can Knits. So they have from I think Baby to adult, wide range of sizes for these mittens, as well as a wide range of yarn weights that you can use. So you can use anything, I think, you might be able to use fingering to chunky, like a wide range. So um, I thought, well, I will just knit up a pair of these in the yarn held single, and it turns out that was perfect. I made a slightly shorter cuff so the pattern require, or asks for two and a half inches of cuff and I just did two inches because I wanted to make sure I had enough. I didn't want to run out. Uh, and then I just whipped up a little pair of simple um, child's mittens. These ones are uh, like thinner because I, I use the yarn um, single weight, but I think they will still be warm and they're definitely better than nothing. Again, a string so that they don't get lost. And while I was sort of considering this pattern, I used it as an opportunity to play with the new Tin Can Knits app. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, I would encourage you to do so. It is um, a way to streamline Tin Can Knits patterns to make them easy to read for your use. So right now I think there's nine patterns on there. They're all, I think, patterns that are free available for free from Tin Can Knits, and you can go ahead and print them out if you like. Um, but if you, like me, are moving more towards keeping your patterns on a digital device, you might like the option of the app. So what you do is you select the pattern that you want to knit. In this case, I chose the World Simplest Mitts. Um, when you click on that, it asks you what size you want to make. So I chose Children's. And then because this pattern is offered in a weight, uh, variety of weights of yarn, uh, it asks you uh, what kind of yarn you're using. And so I clicked on, I think it's worsted slash Aran. And then um, it just gives you every, all of the information in one tiny little spot without all the extra numbers. Uh, so there's a place to sort of um, 
type in the, t the yarn that you're using so you can keep track of the projects that you've made on their website, um, or sorry, not website, app. Uh, so you, I typed in Cascade, and then which is the brand of the yarn I used, and then Anthem. And then you can um, use some color adjustment to select the color that you made. So Barbie pink. And, uh, and then it just lays your pattern out for you very nicely with only the information that you need. So it told me I needed a 3.75 millimeter DPN and a four and a half millimeter DPN to knit the mittens. It told me I needed a hundred yards of yarn. And then uh, the pattern began. And it, it just, like I said, gives you the information that you need for this size, for this pattern. So it was cast on, I don't even remember, might've been 28 stitches. So instead of a normal tin can knit pattern, which has many, many numbers, it streamlines it down for just the information that you need for the project that you are making currently. And then the next time you go to make these mittens again, you can start a new project and select a different size, a different yarn weight, and it gives you that information. So it is a great tool for using tin can knit patterns and streamlining it for the simplest um, pattern for you. Now currently it only has nine patterns and they are all the free patterns, which is great. I'm not sure how Tin Can Knit pl Knits plans on adding all of their great catalog of patterns because Tin Can Knits has a large catalog of patterns and um, some of them have already been purchased. Like I have purchased many of their patterns either on Ravelry, I have some of their books in my library and so I'm not sure how they will allow for that sort of transition. So I'm not sure how they would allow me, if if they will, I'm not sure, how they will allow for that, uh, for uh, me to go in and have a look at a pattern that I've already purchased elsewhere um, to find that information and streamline it down. It could be that they just don't do that. They don't do any of their old patterns and they move forward with new ones, I'm not sure. But for now and for the patterns that they have on there, and it is a, a really nice way of streamlining it down for the simplest um, pattern for you um, for whatever project that you are knitting. So I used the simplest mitten pattern. That is another fabulous mitten pattern. And I made a third pair of mittens and that along with all of these little strings <clears throat> pretty much used up two skeins of Anthem. Now, no, I know that not everybody is a Barbie pink lover, and so I wanted to so cater to more than just that um, demographic. And so I thought, who doesn't love neon green? <laughs> um, so I picked up two skeins of neon green while I was at it. I've already made two pairs of the Super Mittens. Uh, again, same size, because I thought I know that I can get that many mittens out of two skeins of yarn. And um, so I've, I've completed those two, and then I'll be making a pair of the World Simplest Mittens, and then some strings, and then I will have six pairs of mittens to put in my donate basket. I plan on doing a quick little video in the fall, um, or maybe I'll just tack it onto one of these videos, just to show you some of the things that we have made for donations um, in this house. And I'm happy to say it's not just me. It has been very much a group effort and uh, I'm gonna need a box, I already know. I already have a number of things that need to go in that box. So I am really happy to see my kids crafting and finding joy in crafting and, and a creative outlet, which I think a lot of people need. So um, I will share that with you in the fall when I have a big collection. But as, as, as of right now, a bunch of mittens, some snuffle mats and some delightful little rabbits <clears throat> and that is all the finished objects which is i think we can agree quite a few but these mittens, i have to say these mittens these super mittens you could i can knit one of these up in oh wow that color is really something isn't it um i can knit one of these up in probably an hour or two well not not an hour maybe two hours you cast on 22 stitches, so it's not like a lot of stitches because it's so, as my older daughter says, chonky. It's a chonky, really substantial <laughs> mitten. 
but I love them and I think they're great and I hope that whoever receives them likes them too. I have a couple things on my needles and one of them is the mini mock neck tank. I think that this will be my last, oh no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I was gonna say this is this will be my last summer knit for this summer, uh, but I think that's a lie. So um, I'll, we'll, we'll reconvene at the end of the episode. <laughs> it will be one of my last summer knits. Um, for this summer anyway. So this is the mini mock neck tank. It is a pattern by Jessie Made Designs, who I think if you're looking for a summer knit, you can't go wrong with Jessie Made. Um, Jessie Made or Petite Knits, they will have you covered. So uh, this is what the top looks like. You cast on the back and you knit the back down to the armpits and then you come around and you pick up along the edgings of the back and you knit the front until you get to the armpits. And then you just knit from there down and at the end you come back and you knit the neckline. I am using, oh, isn't that a great color? Uh, I am using some Volmiza Pure, which I believe is 100% Superwash Merino. It is a 150 gram skein, so it's about, I think the label says 574 yards. It's a lot. I mean, 150 grams of fingering weight is a lot, but I knew I wanted to extend the body for as long as I could. Um, Jessie made often makes cropped tanks and they're really cute, but I know for myself, I like things a little longer. So when I had gotten to the armpits and I had knit down maybe an inch or two, I went back and I picked up all the stitches around the neckline and I pulled from the center of the ball to knit the neckband. I chose to knit the crew neck um, neck. Uh, there's two options, the crew neck and the mini mock neck. The mini mock neck was quite a bit deeper. And so for this first mini mock neck, I thought I would go with the crew neck and see how I liked it. I can see myself making more of these. There is a knitter on Ravelry who has made probably five of these or more. She's a beautiful blonde, um, lovely lady, and she has made all sorts of colors and they all look fabulous on her. And so um, I'm a little bit inspired to maybe make some more of these for next summer, but not right now. Uh, and maybe in different yarns. But this, I have to say, this Volmiza was a great um, option. Given the size of the skein, I can make one tank top out of one skein of yarn. And that's, from from my size, um, I think that's pretty great. I like, well, I have a 40 inch bust. And so this one, I was aiming to be closer to my actual bust measurement or possibly with some negative ease. And so I'm at the point where I'm just knitting down. It's interesting. You can see this like sort of pooling. I think it's let you see it less in real life, but with the light, um, it is a bit more striking. And my plan is to just knit this whole skein of yarn into this cute little tank top. I just switched to smaller needles last night and started, you can't even see, I don't think. I did maybe one or two rounds of the ribbing, which is a one by run rib, and I have this much yarn. So I will knit ribbing for this much, <laughs> and then I will do the Italian tubular sewn bind off. I have talked about that tubular sewn bind off before, and I think, I think what I might do is make a video of it. I know a lot of people are interested in it, and so um, it's a great bind off. So I'll maybe share that with you. Um, later this summer and into the fall, because I think it's a great tool to have. You may not choose to use it very often, um, but it, it does make a really nice edging. I did that uh, bind off here on, the, on this one by one ribbing, and I think it really gives it a nice finished look. You can see that the, um, particularly here, you can see that the knit stitches just seem to roll over the edge and it is very stretchy. So that's my mini mock neck tank. And I have one last thing. 
splits on the needles. And that is the Contrast Blast Socks. This is a pattern by Stephen West. It is the surprise sock along for 2023, um, which I don't think any, has anyone ever done a surprise sock along, like a mystery sock along? If they have, I don't know about them, but I'm so glad that Stephen West is doing this because I think sometimes Stephen West's shawl knit alongs can be intimidating. Um, not the least of which is because there are some wackadoodle techniques that he uses that you would never, maybe never encounter unless you were doing one of his knit alongs. And I think it's a great way to stretch your creativity and your skills and just be exposed to different things. Because I don't know about you, but I often knit similar things. I knit plain socks. I knit uh, a lot of stockinettes. Sometimes I'll do cables, I'll do color work. But um, I think Stephen West mystery patterns encourage us to break out of our shells and try something new. And even if you're not delighted with the end project, I think that for me, the journey or the learning or the process of trying new things is worth it. So um, I am making the socks. I have completed the first sock. And uh, if you don't want to see, you can stop the video now. I'm not I'm not going to be talking about too much more interesting things. Um, so if you want to look away, look away for a little while and I'll tell you when to look back. If you're not at all interested in seeing these socks, bye, I'll see you later. If you want to stick around and hear the last couple things I have to talk about, you're more than welcome. But I'm going to show you the sock now. So this, boom, <laughs> is the Contrast Blast socks. Stephen West uh, suggested that these socks would look great in some very contrasting socks or colors. And I took that as a challenge <laughs> to pick a couple of wacky colors. Now I had another skein of Volmiza. This one, however, is the sock base, which is a 75% wool, 25% nylon. If I'm, if I am incorrect, I will clarify myself here, but this is the sock yarn here in the, in the turquoise color, which is the same as my mini mock neck tank. And then um, I took a trip to Fiber Nook to see what I could find that would be um, of the most contrast possible. And I found some uh, lucky, oh my God, look at that. This is Leo and Roxy yarn. The camera doesn't even know what to do with it. It is like incredibly, beautifully neon yellow. This color is called Password. And uh, they have some, a few different neon colors. And I thought this would be so much fun. And I thought if I have leftovers, this would be fun for heels, cuffs, and toes on some other socks. Because why not? Um, so I started the first clue. And um, I think these are going to be some really long socks because Stephen, Stephen West does like, <laughs> does like to uh, throw in as much into his clues as he can. So it started out with some ribbing. There was some lovely cabling going on. And then we get into this slip st stitch color work pattern, which looks like stairs. And so this is the first sock. I, uh, I am planning on knitting the second sock at the same time. So I have divided my yarn into two balls of each color. And I have another set of DPNs. So I will be um, knitting the other sock now before the next clue comes out on Thursdays. Stephen West has uh, made uh, fraternal twins or like socks for each foot. So this is the right foot sock. There is a different pattern, not a different pattern. It's the same pattern with the opposite um, shaping, I would say, for the left foot. Um, and so if you're interested in making a right and a left sock, you can do that. Stephen fully encourages you though to just make two right socks if this is a challenge or um, too overwhelming. Or just to knit one sock at a time and then see, see where you end up. Um, I plan on starting the left sock sometime today, I think. And I have what I hope is a clever way of keeping them. Um, separate. So I used a red um, stitch marker. These bulb stitch markers are great. I got 
a big box of them in probably 15 different colors um, for like $10. And so I use them as stitch markers for everything. But this red one is on the right one, red for right. And I have a lilac. Can you see that? Maybe if I do this, a lilac stitch marker for left. I had to be slightly uh, creative because not a lot of colors start with L, but we can call this lilac or lavender. Um, and that would be for the left sock. And that's how we will keep them straight. And if I forget, I'm gonna come back and watch this video so that I can be reminded. And that is what I'm working on right now. I'm excited to start the second sock because I think it'd be fun to have two, um, two socks of a pair going at the same time. I don't often knit um, socks like that. Usually I knit a whole sock and then I knit the second sock. Uh, but this will be my first time doing a bit and a bit and, and I'll see how I like it. I do have some, oh, I have a couple of plans uh, for future knits. One of them is the Fairground Socks by KF Jones, which I'll pop a picture in here, here or here, uh, so that you can see how cute these socks are. And I've got some yarn waiting in the wings for when I need a, a small project on the go. And when I finish my mini mock neck tank, I plan on starting an as if tea. This is why I was sort of humming and hawing about that being my last summer knit. Um, I don't think of this pattern, which I'll show here, here or here. Um, I don't think of it as necessarily a summer tee. It is definitely lightweight, but I think it's sort of an a cute top that I could wear out for dinner with my husband and a pair of jeans or maybe with a lovely skirt. Um, so I think it's the kind of thing you could dress up or dress down and I think I could wear it all year round as a sort of mm, fancier top. Uh, I have some yarn that I ordered from Magpie Fibers. In this year where I have been trying to work very much from stash and work down my stash, I have allowed myself to purchase yarn for specific projects if I know I'm going to be knitting them soon. That's where I want to get to. I want to get to a point where I uh, can find a pattern that I want to knit right away, get the yarn for it, and knit it. Um, so by working through my stash, I won't have the guilt of having this extra yarn lying around that doesn't have any um, projects necessarily assigned to it. And I know everybody works with a stash in a different way, but that's my goal for now, and I'll see how I like it. Anyway, I did purchase some yarn for the As If Tea, and I got it from Magpie Fibers, which is the yarn that was originally used in the pattern. I got navy. I did have a discussion with a friend of mine about navy and our current passion for navy. I just think that it's very elegant and I think it would be lovely. And you know what? I sort of, I used to hate navy with black together, but now I think it's sort of French chic. What are your thoughts on navy with black? Are we, are we pro or are we con? I kind of like it. Anyway, this is two different yarns by Magpie Fibers. This one is, look at the depth of that navy. It's called Swanky Sock. This is an 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon fingering weight yarn. And the color is called Midnight Train to Georgia. The same color on a different base is going to be the fingering weight. You can see it's a it's a lace weight. So this is going to be the light airy part at the top of this tank. This is called Plume and it is a 75% cashmere, 25% silk. I uh, I know a lot of people love their mohair, but it, mohair for me is prickly. I prefer alpaca silk. That's a nice blend. And I've never used this cashmere silk. So I with this for me was an opportunity to try a new base to me, and that's this cashmere and silk base. Also in the Midnight Train to Georgia. So this is probably gonna go onto my needles once my little tank top is finished. And I'm, I've got, as I said, I've got this much yarn to knit. So I think that that is a project that will wrap up somewhat soon. I have one more plan. And that is a Rhinebeck sweater. Now I have never been to Rhinebeck. I'm not going to Rhinebeck this year, 
But one day, one day, I'm gonna go to Rhinebeck. I'm saying it here. Maybe, maybe the year I turn 50 will be the year I go to Rhinebeck. Who can say? But I have plans and I'm gonna do it. Uh, but so in the meantime, I'm gonna knit a Rhinebeck sweater uh, and I'll wear that to all the yarning events that I go to when I'm not wearing my crochet granny square pullover. Um, if you're clever and you go to something like Knit City, like I like to do, you can maximize your knit wear, wear <laughs> by attending several days in a row. And then you can just have different sweaters for different days or even a day sweater and an evening sweater if you want. It's a lot of packing, but it's worth it. Um, anyway, Andrea Mowry has a new pattern that has been hinted at. It's coming out on Thursday, I wanna say July 13th. 13th. And there's some fabulous new yarns that are being launched that day to go with this pattern. Um, and I saw some sneak peeks of it and it made me think. It is a color work sweater, which I love. And it uses some color shifting yarns, which I love. And it comes as a vest. I think this is fabulous. I have so many sweaters. If you've stuck around here for a little while, you know that I knit a lot of sweaters. And so the idea of knitting a vest that I can layer on over a t-shirt or a long sleeve t-shirt or maybe a button down, um, I think that would be a really nice addition to my wardrobe. I do have a couple of vests. Um, the one that I knit most recently that I enjoy wearing is just a little bit short. So I am interested in the option of knitting a Rhinebeck vest. How about you? Have you thought about fall sweaters? Are you, do you get giddy at this time of year at the thought of knitting something new? I, I think I'm gonna make a vest. I know, unexpected, uh, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be color work. Uh, there might be steaks. Um, and I am, I'm intrigued with the idea of a layering piece because like I said, I have so many sweaters, um, both cardigans and pullovers that I think that it would be nice to add something like a vest into my wardrobe. How about you? Are you jumping on board the Rhinebeck sweater bandwagon? Do you think you might knit the vest or the pullover? There's options. It's really nice to have options, isn't it? Um, it's so lovely to have uh, an inspiration and to have plans and to have things that you get excited about, like a new Rhinebeck vest. Um, I hope that you'll tell me in the comments below what you're working on and what you're excited about knitting for fall. I know it's only early July, but knitters like to plan ahead. We have to, it takes a while to knit these things. I hope that in the next couple of weeks, you find time to work on the things that you like to work on, whether that's crafts, baking, a garden, or yourself. I hope that you find things that make you feel great about yourself, like my really fabulous crochet granny square pullover. I hope that you find time to do the things you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I will see you soon. Bye.